thanks everybody. Thanks Saifu for organizing these and giving us this incredible opportunity to um, leave our living rooms for a few hours. Uh, I'm going to talk about biocosmology, which is which we believe is a new science we're trying to found with uh, Lee Smolin, uh, Andrew Little and Stuart Kaufman. Sorry. Basically, uh, what I'm going to show is that uh, we have created for the first time a language between cosmology and biology that and we, with this language, we can give a quantitative value for how much our biosphere is worth in the context of the cosmos in the currency and laws of, uh, of the cosmos. So cosmologists are always wanting to know how did the universe begin? What is the likelihood that our universe was like this and not some, in, in some other um, shape? According to thermodynamics, we should just be a huge blob of gas today, but we see instead many different things, stars, planets, galaxies, black holes, dark energy, and there is no explanation for how special this is a very special universe we are in. So to understand, to begin to answer, we count the number of things, different uh, microscopic states of the universe. Uh, up until 20 years ago, we thought black holes were the most diverse, contain the most diversity because they can uh, swallow one galaxy or two galaxies at a time. And so their, their differences or their, their amount of complexity is e to the 10 to the 101, which is a very big number. Uh, 20 years ago, Saul Perlmutter and other colleagues, and I know most of you know Saul uh, from the Bay Area and coming to Saifu, uh, he won the Nobel Prize because he discovered dark energy, which is a repulsive gravity, dominates the universe, and has a lot more um, complexity in it. It, it fills the entire universe. And so it, the number has gone up to E to the 10 to the 124. And I can tell you there is no living uh, scientist uh, that has ever found a biggest number than this. This is the biggest number we have ever encountered in the natural world. You need to go to mathematics. And you, you must think about it as a, a likelihood of our universe. So if dark energy dominates the universe, uh, we need to explain the likelihood of, of our universe because it is, it is just one part in E to the 10 to the 124 very, very unlikely. But up until now, we did not include our pale blue dot. There's no life included in this counting of specialness of uh, likelihood. It's just like a barren moon. Uh, and so what we thought was, let's count what, how does uh, uh, life contribute to it? Our planet is insignificantly small and we always thought that it cannot contribute to a, a size of the cosmos in diversity and in, um, in likelihood. And we also thought that it was impossible because there's no language between physics and, and biology that can compute these at a fundamental microscopic level. And Stu Kaufman that we uh, are working with has this idea of counting the number of possibilities that expands exponentially at each time. We made a comp computational computation of these and we went from these two perspectives. So the cosmos has the biggest number of, of contribution to diversity and our planet has zero. And the number we came up with after using the complexity of life compared to the dark energy that dominates the universe is um, this one, 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 20, uh, to 216. This is just the computation because our, it, it's computation were very heavy. We just computed up to the era that the first RNA molecule appears. So today it is actually much vaster than this. What does this mean? Uh, so like I said, this is, a, we, we transcended physics and biology and found a number that we can give quantitatively uh, put a, a value on life within the cosmos and transcending all disciplines, but also that 
even if it is infinitely small, in our 30 billion light years long universe, the biosphere, living things are the biggest puzzle that we have to explain at the Big Bang because they're the most, by far most unlikely, even before our infinite universe. So this is the last slide. We hope that cosmology can contribute to climate change and give an, an idea of what we are worth in this little planet. Uh, we, we found this currency of the cosmos. It's, uh, you have e to the 10 to the 124 on one side, and on the other side is a tower of exponentials. And this is in a physics language of microstates. So if we give up this fight, or if we lose this fight and we lose the planet the, or the, the life on the planet ends, we are not just lo losing a tiny minuscule corner of the universe. We are losing the most valuable, vastly most valuable contribution to diversity in the universe. Thank you.